Welcome to The Thriving Christian Artist, the podcast where we hope you connect with God to bust through the roadblocks that have held you back for years, create the work you love, and really live the life you know God created you to live as an artist in His kingdom. I'm Matt Tama, your host. Let's get started. Well, hey there, my friend, and welcome to another episode of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. You know, it's July here uh, in the United States, and we are outside. We're having a good time, and so we thought we'd use this time to do a best of series here on the podcast, bringing back some of my favorite episodes, some of your favorite episodes, and today is all about one of my favorite topics, helping artists be prospering artists, not starving artists. Listen, I hope this episode is going to be a big, big blessing to you, especially if you didn't get to hear it the first time that it came out over a year ago. But hey, even if you did, it's going to be a great, great refresher and encouragement to your life. All right. Hey, I can't wait to see you again in August. Uh, We're going to be back with some brand new episodes. So make sure that you are subscribed and that you've reviewed the podcast so you don't miss anything that's coming out here on The Thriving Christian Artist. All right. I look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Well, hey, everybody, it's Matt Tommy, and I hope you're doing really well this morning. I wanted to take a little bit of time and uh, share a really, really important uh, message that's on my heart with you this morning and really just kind of bring you into um, some of the, I don't know, core things about the kingdom that are so key (laughs) for you to understand. You know, most of the artists that I meet all over the world, um, and, you know, I just got back from Romania and Budapest and Hungary and um, when I've traveled in America and Australia and the UK and Canada, it doesn't matter. Every Christian artist, <laughs> just about, that I have met over the years really, 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 I mean like majorly, <laughs> struggles with money. They struggle in the financial area. They don't know how provision happens for them. They don't know uh, why some people are provided for, it seems, and why some people struggle with money. They don't know why they have ups and downs. They don't know why, for some people, there seems to be a real grace around their finances. And for others, it seems that um, they can never get ahead. There is real, real struggle in the body of Christ around finances. And one of the things that I am passionate about, that God's really given me Um, authority in out of my own journey and also real passion for is helping artists break out of this starving artist mentality. This is not the Lord. It is not your, uh, you know, lot in life. (laughs) This is God is so much more for you. How mean would God be? How cruel would God be if he called you to something and yet didn't prepare you for it and didn't provide for you in that. And so I want to take a little bit of time today. And, um, you know, this teaching is just about, you know, just a little snippet of so much of what I teach in the mentoring program about finances and beginning to align yourself uh, to receive God's resources in your life, to connect with the flow of heaven in your life. But I wanted to to really take a little bit of time today and give you just a, a basic understanding of how finances in the kingdom works, how money in the kingdom works. Because listen, if you don't get this, if you don't understand how finances work in the kingdom, you will live in constant frustration. See, the reason that God wants you to prosper as an artist in his kingdom is because that's your assignment. All right. This is how God's wired you. It's how he's designed the kingdom to flow through your life. Anything that happens, all right, in the earth, all right, when God is releasing his spirit, all right, his nature through the earth, it's going to happen through his children. Now, can God do sovereign moves of his glory? Absolutely, you know, but but there's there's a reality that when God begins to move in the earth, he uses his sons and daughters. That's the way he set it up. That's not my idea, all right? This is how God set it up. And so, the issue is if, if you don't understand how to receive that provision, if you don't understand how to align with that provision in your life, then you stay really, really frustrated. See, God wants you to understand how money and provision flow so that you're not focused on it all the time. 
See, when you don't have money, and I know because I've been in times in my life where we didn't have money. We struggled financially. We didn't know how the kingdom worked. We didn't know how finances flow in the kingdom. And listen, I, I'm going to look at you and I want I want you to hear my voice. <laughs> if I could sit down with you right now at your kitchen table, I want to let you know that it's not because God isn't good. It's not because God has forgotten you. It's simply because you don't understand how the kingdom works. And when you start to understand how the kingdom works, you can align with God's plan for provision in your life. And things really begin to change. Because see, when you don't have money, when you don't have the provision, the resources, the relationships, all the things that you need to us to accomplish the assignment that God's given you, what happens is a desperation begins to come up in your heart. And you begin to run to and fro like a chicken with your head cut off, just like in, in Proverbs uh, where it talks about, you know, without vision, people cast off restraint. It's this picture of a of a chicken running around with your head cut off. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll take this job. I'll, I'll do that. I, I need money. I'll do anything I need. And, and we just run around instead of connecting with our source. All right. And so I want to teach you today in a real clear, basic way. All right. Again, this is just kind of the basics, but how this process works so that you can begin to make a switch from the, maybe the life that you've been living, the frustration that you've been living about money, and you can begin to receive the, the provision that God has for you and actually begin to get on with the assignment that he's got in your life, being an artist in his kingdom or whatever he's called you to in business or family or you know, whatever it is, entrepreneurship, I don't know, whatever your life is supposed to look like. All right. So if you're in for this, get ready. All right. Cause this is, this is going to be good. All right. Now, most of us, when it comes to money and how provision flows and that sort of thing, we've got these stories <laughs> in our mind that we tell ourselves about money that, that really keep us away from the provision that God has for us in our life. All right. If you've read Created to Thrive, if you if you're in the mentoring program or what you know, you you know all of the the teaching that I've done over the years about how your brain works, how your mind works, how God's wired us, all right, with our beliefs, our thoughts, the blueprint of our life, all right? All of that is so important. And what the movies that play in your head, the stories that you tell yourself are key. Because they define and refine over time <laughs> the paradigm of your life and the, and the paradigm from which you you live your life. And most of us, when we don't understand how the kingdom works, most people are telling yourself stories like, you know, I can't have money. Money's bad. If you have money or if, you're, if you want money or, or think, you know, that you need more money, you're being greedy. Um, a lot of you think that money is hard to keep or it's hard to get. All right. Easy come, easy go. You know, um, many of you think that it's selfish to want to have money. Maybe you came in a, came in in a, an overly religious, you know, re, re, filled with religiosity, a lot of baggage, um, you know, around finances. And somebody told you, well, you know, money's the root of all evil and only crooked people, only people that, you know, uh, take advantage of other people have money. Only corrupt people have any money. So you don't, you don't need money. You know, you just need, all you need is Jesus, you know? Well, how many of you realize <laughs> that God put us in this world and in this world, we need money. You need finances to be able to accomplish the things that God has called you to do. See, God doesn't have money because God doesn't need money. <laughs> all right. God has ideas, all right, about how to harvest that money for us in line with our assignment. We'll get to that in a minute. But, you know, we're the ones that need finances in the earth realm, all right? We're the ones that need finances to do the things that God's called us to do, all right? So that's not a good or a bad thing. That just, it is what it is. And you've got to understand that and, and take all this baggage off of the money thing. 
So many people. I heard a preacher the other day was talking about, you know, well, today we're going to talk about, you know, what, prospering in God's kingdom. But I'm not talking about the prosperity gospel because that's all wrong and all this kind of thing. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> the beauty of the, of the gospel of the kingdom is that we've been brought back into relationship with the Father through Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and given everything we need for life and godliness to thrive and prosper in this life. Resources, relationships, ideas, and yes, finances. So just like God is your healer, just like Jesus is the one that saved you, listen, God is also your provider. He's your source, all right? But the, the problem is, and here, here's the issue. <laughs> the problem is most of us are never taught this in a practical way. We're taught on one side, kind of this gospel of salvation that, you know, get saved, get out of hell, go to, go to heaven, hold on till Jesus comes. And that's really the essence of the Christian life. We're never taught the fact that, yes, when you come to know Jesus, you enter into the fullness. You've been restored back to the original, beautiful relationship with God. That what he calls us to do is recognize his design in our life, to honor him in everything that we do, to walk with him and to receive the provision that he's got for us in our life in order to, what? Accomplish the assignment that he's given us. That is is the message of the kingdom. And then as we do that, signs and wonders flow. As we do that, grace flows. As we do that, there's a peace and a joy and the fruit of the Spirit gets manifested in our life. But most Christians, and I would venture to say the vast majority of Christian artists are never taught this. And and what what is modeled to most people, and I know it was modeled to me, all right, and again, I'm not trying to blame anybody, or I'm just saying this is, most of us grew up with this kind of model. This model that Jesus, God, you know, the Father, the Holy Spirit, they're over here on Sunday. They're the one that that saved us, all right? But then everything else pretty much <laughs> is on us. What you do for your job, where you get your money, how you make things happen in your life, your job, your calling, your assignment, all that. And maybe God wants to be involved in that, or maybe the things that we do should honor God, but there's no thought to that, hey, maybe God is the source of all of it. <laughs> maybe it's all his. <laughs> maybe this whole thing about the kingdom is it involves everything. All right? And so what happens is most Christians and the vast majority of Christian artists end up looking for, listen to me, they end up looking for their provision outside of their assignment in the kingdom. And when you do that, you set yourself up for big, big frustration. Because you set yourself up to try to receive provision in a way that God never intended. I want you to let that sink in just a second. And I know... I know that this is provocative for people because it calls into question probably most of what you have believed about how money flows and how provision flows in, the, in, in your life. And more than likely, if you're like me, this was my story years ago, everything in your life that has to do with provision and money and your job and all that, all of that was just something that you came up with. <laughs> all of that was something that you tried your best to figure out and then ask God to bless and couldn't figure out why nothing was working out for you. And you live in total frustration and going round and round and round. And you see other people getting blessed. You see other people uh, finding a flow in their life. You find other people that are kind of hitting this stride in their life and you don't know why it happens. And so for me, as I look back at my own life before I understand understood how the kingdom works, I had really several core beliefs about God's provision in my life. And here's the deal. I just came to understand that most of those, 
are absolutely untrue and don't have anything to do with the truth of God's word. They're just based on my experience, my woundedness, the people that I was hanging around with, the grid that had been developed, the blueprint that I was working off of. All right. And they had to do th with things like this. You know, well, if you want to get ahead in life, you know, you better work really, really hard. You know, it's all up to you. Or, you know, if you're an artist, you better just do that as a hobby because you'll never make a lot of money as an artist. You know, so you better go get a real job, probably that you don't like, <laughs> so that you can end up doing your art on the side. Maybe if you're not tired enough, you know, you're not too tired and you're not overwhelmed with life and all that kind of stuff, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you need to get a real job to support your family. You you know, maybe maybe some of you came up in this kind of thing where God's provision for you was conditional on how much you gave, how much you gave in the offering plate or something like that, all right? Maybe some of you believed like I did. I believe this idea that, well, you know, creative people are kind of flighty and we're not good with money, you know? So uh, money and business, that's not really our strong suit. So we kind of have to, let other people handle that, all right? Um, or this idea that if you're going to be an artist, you need to get used to just having a little, you know, just kind of scraping by. I talk to people all the time. In fact, there's a person on my team that it's uh, it's been interesting as we've gotten to know each other over the years. I'll ask them to do something, and when they when they go to do it, they always end up trying to do it for the cheapest um, short, you know, the cheapest absolute way to do it. And finally, we talked about that. I'm like, why are you, wh what's up with that? And they're like, well, every ministry I've ever worked for and every, in my own life, I just never had any money and we never had any money as a ministry. And so we always just tried to cheap out on it. And I'm like, listen, we got plenty of money. <laughs> we got, we got plenty of resources to do what God calls us to do. Let's do it in excellence. Let's go for it. And whoa, <laughs> that's a huge you know, difference uh, in thinking about how provision flows in your life. You don't have to just kind of squeeze it out all the time. You don't have to just try to squeeze by and scrape by with the bare minimum. That's not God's best. That's not God's plan for your life, all right? Maybe some of you believe this idea of, you know, um, you'll never be good enough, or you can't do this full time, or you'll never be as good as them, or you know, I'll never be successful enough in business uh, to have all my financial needs met. Um, or maybe you have to become good enough in business in order to get all your financial needs met. Or maybe you can't really pursue your art until you retire or till your husband or your wife retires and you have more time. And, you know, all that. We just believe these lies over and over and over again. And what I've found over the years is that there's kind of two camps that people fall into. One is the, the work, sweat, strive, and the other is the hope, wait, and beg. <laughs> See, most Christians over-spiritualize this whole thing, and they're like, well, you know, if God wants me to have money, he'll give it to me. Well, that's not true. That's not how the kingdom works. And so we end up doing this mailbox mentality thing. I write about this in Created to Thrive, the book. Um, hope is not a strategy. <laughs> We have a hope. The hope is that Jesus is Lord. Jesus has provided everything that we needed through reconciliation with the Father. And now we have all things. That's the hope. That's the great hope. But the hope is not that maybe God will get in a good mood and bless us one day. That is not how the kingdom works. Well, hey, there's Matt. And you know, one of the things that I found over the years in working with artists is that real lasting change in our life happens best in the context of supportive Christian community. And that's why I wanted to take this opportunity just to take a second and invite you to be a part of my online community called the Thriving Christian Artists Facebook Group. Listen, this group is absolutely free and over the years has actually grown to thousands and thousands of artists in just about every creative medium from countries all over the world. You know, the cool thing is that it's become a real place of encouragement and life for artists, just like you and me, who want to share their work, share their life, <laughs> connect with other artists, and really pursue everything God has for us as artists in his kingdom. Now, listen, to join, all you have to do is just click the link in the show notes here and answer a couple of questions just to let us know that you're a real person, and bam, you're in, okay? So, listen, I can't wait to connect with you inside of my Thriving Christian Artists Facebook group. Do it now, and we'll see you there very soon. All right, bye.
But most people do that. Most people are like, well, you know, one day, maybe God will, God will bless me. And well, when it's God's timing, you know, we have all these spiritual ways of saying this. And so we just wait, wait, wait. And then when things get really bad, we just, we start begging. Oh God, please. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do this. And I believe, you know, I need this. You know, I need money. You know, I want to go to gathering of artisans this year, but I never have the money. I know, you know, I want to join the mentoring program. You know, I want to go invest in these art supplies. You know, I need a new studio this year, but I just never have what I need. And oh Lord, you know, would you please come and do something? And, and that's kind of how life goes. And then we think, well, if I'll just go to this conference or get this person to lay hands on me or whatever, then everything will be better and you just you just stay frustrated. And then most people get tired of that. And the ones that get tired of it kind of go over into what I do, or did, before I, I knew how the kingdom worked. And it was this kind of work, sweat, strive, which is, well, since God's not really doing anything right now, it doesn't seem, I'm just going to kind of get on this thing myself. <laughs> I'm going to get out there ahead of God. I'm going to work. I'm going to make it happen my own self. I'm going to sweat by the toil of my brow. I'm going to strive. I'm going to make it happen. But what happens with that? Well, you may end up seeing a little bit of fruit, but you're completely overwhelmed. There's no grace in your life. Everything that you started in the flesh, you got to maintain in the flesh. And you look around going, where is God? Is this all there is? See, Jesus was real clear in the New Testament about how money worked. He said, listen, you can't serve two masters. This is in Matthew 6, 24. You cannot serve two masters, all right? You either serve one or you hate the other. I mean, that's kind of how it happened. You can't serve two at the same time. And there's two systems going on in this world. There's the kingdom system. All right, which I'm going to teach you about. And there's also the mammon system, which most Christians are still operating in. The mammon system. All right. And so what happens is in the mammon system, you're under the curse. You're under the curse of Adam. You're under the curse of of Cain. What are those curses? The curse is you're going to work by the toil and sweat of your brow. The more you do, the less you're going to get. You're going to be in a place of wandering. All right. You can read. I wrote about that in Unlocking and in Created to Thrive and other books. That's what happens. And everything is based on you. It's all based in your strength. All right. It's all based in kind of just trying to find enough, grab enough, get enough, hoard money in order to kind of make it happen yourself. Well, in the kingdom, the opposite is true. (laughs) We're under the blessing of God. God's promise to provide for us, not because of what we do, because of who we are. We operate out of God's grace as opposed to our own striving. And we connect with the divine flow of provision in in, in our assignment in the kingdom. We don't just barely scrape by. See, we align with divine provision in line with our assignment and by revelation from the Holy Spirit, God begins to show us what to do, what opportunities to uh, pursue, what, uh, you know, new ideas he begins to give us, new ideas for clients, strategic partners, ideas for your artwork, ideas for new shows, ways to sell your work, clients to talk to, people to talk. All of this stuff just begins to flow. Why? Why? Because we check out of this idea that we got to do it all ourselves, and we connect to the provision of God in our life and the truth of his word. Now, if you're in the mentoring program, you know this because our whole first module is all based on realigning your heart and mind. It's the lion's share of, of uh, so much of the work that people have to do before they can even begin to receive um you know, the, uh, the good things that God has for them is realigning your heart and mind to the truth of what God's word says. And so what you have to start doing, I teach this principle all the time. You know, all of us think thoughts all day long. The Bible teaches that if you want to change your life, you got to change your thoughts. And so when thoughts come into your mind, 
you can't just receive them as true because they're seeds and seeds go into your heart. Your heart is a garden. Your heart is designed to produce a harvest and the harvest is what you experience in your life. All right. That's how we're designed. That's how the kingdom works. Your heart doesn't care what seed you put in it, (laughs) whatever you put in it, whatever you put in your mind and your heart, they're going to bring forth fruit. All right. Look into the, the parable of, of, uh, of the growing seed. That's how that works. Again, I talk a lot about this in Created to Thrive. All right. I'm just trying to give you the, the high points here. <laughs> but when you have a thought that does not align with God's word or any thought, you got to grab that thought, just like Paul said, take every thought captive. You got to look at it and you got to say, now, is this aligning with God's word or not? Is the truth of what I'm feeling, is, is what I'm feeling right now aligned with God's truth or is it aligned with woundedness and fear? Is it aligned with lack or is it aligned with provision? It is, al- is it aligned with my experience or is it aligned with God's truth? And the Bible says that if you want to renew your mind, all right, you have to, you have to, if you want to be transformed, you got to do so by the renewing of your mind. That is, you got to pluck out those thoughts that don't align with who God is and plant new thoughts that align with his word, that align with his promises. Well, what does God's word say about money? All right. What does God's word say about provision? All right. Well, if you got if you got notes, grab your notebook. All right. Cause I'm going to give you five or six here. All right. Just again, this is just a little bit. I'm just trying to give you a context for how this works. All right. So what about Matthew 6, 24? We just said you can't serve two masters. All right. You, you're designed to use your finances for God's glory, to be a conduit. And guess what? As you do that, you also get to receive benefit. Jesus said that I came that you might have life and have it to the full. <laughs> your life is supposed to be a reflection of the beauty and the, the, the abundance of God. Again, don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that, you know, this is all about going to get a a brand new Maserati and bragging, you know, how blessed you are to everybody. No, (laughs) what I'm saying is, as you're living your life, you need to understand that God designed you to live it in a place of provision so that you can do the things that God's called you to do, that you can be a blessing to others, so that you can be a, a conduit of blessing in the earth in line with your assignment. All right. Now, what about Hebrews 4, 9? Hebrews 4, 9 says this. There remains a Sabbath rest for us in the new covenant. Now, what is that talking about? Well, the reason that God instituted the Sabbath is that it's a declaration in the spirit and in the natural that says, you know what? I believe that that I'm going to be provided for while I choose not to strive and while I choose not to work. I'm going to take 24, I'm going to take a day off. I'm going to give it back to the Lord in rest as a declaration that it's not me that's my provider. It's God that's my provider. See, that's a, that's a, a, a blueprint shift. It's not all about you making it happen yourself. No, it's about operating in a place of Sabbath, in a place of rest, realizing what God has designed you to receive your provision by faith, by revelation in line with your assignment, not for you to have to go out and toil, struggle, sweat, make it happen yourself. I don't know what to do. Oh my God, I'm so confused, frustrated, all that. That is not God. And no matter how much you beg God to help out in that program, without faith, the Bible says, it's impossible to please God. Faith says, God, I see what you want me to do. I understand how this thing works. I agree with it and I receive it into my life. And when you do that, agreement opens the door for something to flow in your life. See, most of you right now, if you're struggling big time in finances, you're agreeing with fear. You're agreeing with mammon. You're agreeing with this whole thing is based on me. You're agreeing with, I got to make this happen. And so guess what? You just open the door and you welcome all that struggle and toil and sweat and frustration into your life. All right. I'm going to tell you how to get out of it in a minute. What about Matthew 5 and 6? All those chapters, you know, Jesus talks about, look at the birds of the field. 
you know, the birds of the air, the flowers of the field, they don't toil or sweat. Look how much I take care of them. Oh, you of little faith, how much more am I going to take care of you? And then in in, in Matthew uh, 6, 24, he goes into the you can't serve two masters thing. And then Matthew 6, 33, it says what? Seek first, what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness and what? All these things, physical things. We're not just talking spiritual things. Physical things will be added unto you. So again, as you're seeking alignment with his kingdom in line with your design, you're connecting with him in that way, receiving all he has to you by, by faith. God will begin to bring finances and resources into your life to do the thing that he's called you to do. All right. That's the way the kingdom works. Now, what about this? Deuteronomy 8.18, part of the promise, the, the covenant that we have with God. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, it's the Lord that what? Gives you the ability to make wealth. What? <laughs> Is that something that you believe? Is that something that you tell yourself all the time? Lord, every morning when I walk in this studio, I'm like, Father, thank you for this studio. Thank you for my gallery. Thank you that you've given me my baskets and my books and speaking and mentoring, all the stuff. That, thank you, Lord, that you've given me the ability to make wealth, to do the things that you've called me to do. Do you know that uh, when I go uh, speak, you know, sometimes at churches, sometimes they don't have the money to pay you. Sometimes, uh, you know, I go to a foreign country, their exchange rate is uh, one-tenth, one-twentieth of what ours is. And you spend a week over there and you just get a little bit. Well, guess what? I'm not worried about that. Why? Because I know that God's my provider. Do you know that uh, I just got back from Europe and um, I'm over there for two weeks speaking, teaching, all that kind of stuff. Guess what? Right before I left, uh, I had somebody call me out of the blue, wanted to commission something. Right when I got back, same thing, another commission coming in for my artwork. What's God doing? He's saying, Matt, you just, you just be concerned with what I've called you to do. I'll be concerned with providing for you. And so I'm, there I am 12 days in Germany, doing a conference there in Romania, doing a conference there three days of vacation in Budapest with a great friend, Mark, who's part of our team. We're there hanging out, eating at beautiful restaurants going up. I'm like, Whoa, what is this? And the father the whole time is like, Matt, this is how the kingdom works. This is not special treatment just for some people. This is the normal flow of the kingdom. And yet so many people are not used to it that they have no clue what to do when it starts to happen. They have no, they have no clue how to get that to start happening in their life. See, that may be a belief that you have. That may be an ungodly belief that you have. Well, God will do that for them. But will he do it for me? See, that's a that's a big, big deal. You got to take that to the Lord. All right. What about Proverbs? I could go on with, I mean, I got two more verses I want to give you, but Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth without sorrow. See, God, see, some of you may believe, well, when you have a lot of money, there's a lot of, you know, responsibility. It's hard and it's just better not to have any money, you know, because I don't want to, well, the blessing of the Lord, it says enriches and he gives wealth without sorrow. That is, God's going to bring finances into your life and they're going to be a blessing to you, not a curse. Whoa, that's huge. And what about Proverbs 16, 33? Commit your ways to the Lord and what? They'll succeed. They'll be established. See, this is a different mindset. This is aligning with the truth about God's word. And so what happens is, and this is where you may be right now. If you are, are listening right now and you're saying, wow, the things that Matt's talking about with the truth of God's word, I know that is not how I'm living my life. And I don't want you to hear this in shame. <laughs> I want you to hear this as a beautiful opportunity to repent and to align with the truth of what God has for you. Now, listen, repent has a lot of baggage around it, that word. So many of you have been taught, oh, repent. You know, you're talking about running to the altar and crying, oh, God. Oh. Listen, repent simply means turn. Repent simply means, hey, the Holy Spirit has revealed to you a new way 
to begin to live, a new way to begin to operate. And now all you got to do is just say, Father, whoa, thank you, Jesus. Whoo, I feel, all, even right now, I just feel the Holy Spirit. Shoo, thank you, Lord. Shoo, he's doing that right now, right now, right now in people's hearts. I can sense it right now in the Spirit. He's shifting, shoo, he's shifting people's, thank you, Father. He's shifting right now you out of this lack and curse mentality, this mammon system into, into the kingdom and into grace. And so as he does that, just say, Father, oh Lord, I'm sorry. I repent. I turn away from the, the old way of doing things. And I align with your truth with what you say is true. God, I welcome that into your life. Lord, I declare you as my provider. Lord, would you begin to show me how to walk relying on you as my source, not my own strength. And listen, friend, as you do that, as you do that, as you begin to to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, things will shift. Listen, I see in our Facebook group all the time in the Thriving Christian Artists, our big our big group. I see people all the time, you know, it, and this is kind of what provoked this in me. You know, Gathering of Artisans is coming up and uh, it's not an inexpensive retreat. It takes a lot of money to put that thing on. We pay our teachers well. There's a retreat center involved, meals, lodging, all that kind of stuff. It costs, you know, anywhere from $600 to $1,200, you know, for, for most people to, to come and participate in that for four days. Um, and we don't apologize for that. That's just what it costs because we bless our teachers. You know, we, you know, we are at a nice place. I mean, this is, this is what we do. And, um, see, even that may be a shift for you. Well, if it's ministry, it shouldn't be nice. If it's ministry, we should be sleeping on the floor and sleeping in our cars and just eating rice and beans. No, <laughs> I'm not going there. But anyway, I see people when, when we talk about things like, hey, be a part of the mentoring program. Hey, go to this retreat. Hey, go get the art supplies that you need. Hey, um, come to Gathering of Artisans or whatever it is. And I see people constantly saying things like, well, one day I wish I could come. Or, you know, I don't have any money. I'm on this or that. I've got this illness, this sickness. Uh, I've only got so much money. I'm on a fixed income. Well, you know, I'm retired. Well, you know, I'm on disability. Well, I've only got my social security. Well, you know, uh, I've got kids in college and all these excuses, stories, stories that they tell themselves in order to say, I don't have enough. And my friend, I just want you to realize right now (laughs) that you can either continue to do that You can either continue to live your life like that in major frustration or you can check out of that and you can say, God, thank you that you've given me the ability to make wealth. God, do you have an idea for me that would give me, uh, help me to make enough money to be able to go to gathering this year or to to start that studio that I wanted to do or to go to that conference or to, uh, to bless my friend or to buy those art supplies that I need. Father, do you have a divine appointment for me this year that's going to change the way my business focuses instead of me ha- having to work more and get less that you're going to give me the ability to make more, um, you know, to, to actually get more benefit and not have to give as many hours? I mean, Father, you, you just begin to, you got to turn, <laughs> you got to turn your mentality and begin to align with the kingdom. And listen, when you do things change, they change in my life. I've been, I've been walking in this way now for years. You can't tell me that this is not the way the kingdom works because I know I've seen the goodness of God, not only in my life, not only in my life, I've seen it in the lives of hundreds of people, many of, in the mentoring program because I'm walking with them. I hear their stories on a daily, weekly basis. I see the videos they make. I get the emails from them that are saying, Matt, we're going through the program. We're changing our mind. We're seeing, oh my gosh, God is changing the way provision comes into my life. It's incredible. But wherever you are right now, you can start to make that shift. And I just want to encourage you in that. Sit down with the Lord and just ask him, say, Lord, 
Am I living my life out of my own strength? Am I looking for provision in places that make sense to me but don't have anything to do with your kingdom? Lord, would you show me how to begin to make that shift? Wow. Wow. Things will change. Things will shift because that's the way the kingdom works. All right. Well, hey, I love you very much. I just wanted to sow this into your heart today because it's the truth of God's kingdom. It's how it works. And you don't have to live in that starving artist mentality anymore. All right. There's so much more that God has for you. Be sure to tell me when you're having breakthrough. I love that. Message me. Comment in our Facebook group. Um, You know, if you're in the mentoring program, uh, comment in one of those posts in that group. Uh, If you're listening to the podcast or whatever, you know, uh, subscribe and and put a comment there. Put a review on the podcast. Let us know. Let me know because it encourages me, but it also encourages others that are walking on the same journey. All right. I love you so much. I hope you have a great day. Remember, you can be a thriving artist in God's kingdom. It's there for you right now, and uh, it's accessible. All you have to do is just make that choice. Begin to step into that uh, and ask the Holy Spirit to empower you to do it. All right? I love you very much. Have an awesome day. Bye. Hey, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me today on the podcast. Listen, I hope it's been a huge encouragement to you on your journey as an artist. Hey, also, before you leave, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other episodes of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. And also, be sure to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, or at my website, which is matttommymentoring.com. Until next time, remember, you were created to thrive. Bye-bye.